Yeah, it's April 6th, 2011, uh, 2.30 in the afternoon, and I wanted to uh, go over my solar setup, which is pretty much final. Here's the solar panel, 108 watts. Uh, puts out uh, 18 volts DC to uh, charge my 12-volt batteries. Maximum amperage for this type of solar panel is going to be about 7 amps. Uh, basically, I uh, wanted to be able to hinge or angle it in at least two directions um, to optimize its angle to the sun while I'm in the field. So, what I decided to do is build a frame, and here's the frame, that the panel, the blue frame that the panel sits in, and the panel itself is bolted with hinges to the frame, and the frame is um, bolted to the back ladder rack for stability and in the front the frame is attached to the roof I didn't want to drill into the roof so I grinded down the paint off the roof in two places and used some JB weld and some uh, angle brackets to secure the front and now like I said the panel is bolted with hinges on two sides which will enable me to pull the cotter pin here on two sides or two hinges on either side to angle it in whatever direction either forward or back so if I pulled the pins on these sides this particular side I'd be able to angle it toward the Sun that way and on the other side is two more hinges if I pulled the pins on those two hinges I'd angle it up to face the Sun this way so uh, basically I got enough slack in the, the line which runs uh, to the back of the vehicle along my ladder rack to the back it's not a professional setup it's pretty damn good though just wanted to show uh, I'm gonna tighten up these wires a little bit make them a little bit uh, tidier and basically the solar panel the, the transmission line comes down here it's kind of a temporary thing with the tape I'm gonna bolt it on here uh, goes into what's called a solar charge controller and I got the SunSaver Duo, which means I can actually output the two the separate battery banks. So I got a solar in and two battery hookups. Battery bank one and battery bank two, which outputs to I now have two separate battery banks, battery bank one and battery bank two. And they're not exactly the same. And battery bank one is some expensive AGM batteries, which are completely sealed batteries that do not vent hydrogen gas at all. Uh, they require no maintenance. You don't have to put distilled water in them. And I got two of them parallel together uh, to provide more maximum amperage. And basically I have the solar panel output into this battery bank, which is also connected to a uh, inverter that goes under the seat to provide 110. The other battery bank, battery bank 2, is a little different. Uh, I didn't feel like buying some more expensive batteries and I've had uh, less expensive wet cell batteries. And the only problem was, since they're going to be hooked up to solar all the time, there's a potential for it to vent hydrogen uh, while it's charging when the sun's out. Obviously at night when the system goes into um, sleep mode. Uh, it's not likely to vent hydrogen. So on the safe side, I read online the most optimum way to vent a battery box, and there's a lot of wrong ways to do it that obviously were taken from the old heating and air conditioning and ducting profession, where you vent air from the bottom and, you know, uh, fresh air from the bottom and gas out from the top. That's absolutely wrong, according to uh, this website I, I, uh, I visited and studied. And apparently the best way to do it and the biggest mistake people make is uh, they use PVC or some type of plastic vent tubes, uh, which won't work very well, if, if at all. Uh, you have to use either copper or aluminum or any non-sparking metal. Uh, and also, it's uh, actually two copper tubes, one inside the other. I have a one-inch outer tube and a half-inch inner tube. The inner tube comes down and uh, goes to the very bottom of the box to about an inch off the bottom. That's fresh air in. And uh, the theory is fresh air comes into the bottom of the box, 
hydrogen being lighter than air would rise to the top and exit out the larger one inch copper fitting and it was pretty uh, short of a run through the copper out uh, the side of the van and I actually sort of tested it I got it taped up with uh, some blue tape and I also got some uh, screening on there to prevent bugs spiders from building webs or what have you so you got your oxygen that comes in here or your air excuse me comes in here and goes in to the bottom of the battery box pushes the hydrogen gas which vents out here and I tested it by actually blowing on this tube really hard and I felt the air coming out against my face so it actually does work and then, uh, the purpose of the copper is uh, what they say is um, I'm not an expert but it's a heat sink uh, it's something to do with keeping the air at the same temperature uh, the box inside the box and outside or something to that effect that keeps the air flowing uh, PVC will not allow that to happen and what I did is I put some extra weather stripping along this box to seal it airtight and all the wires that are coming out for the ground and for the uh, solar input and the output for the inverters were all caulked uh, tightly so they'll be airtight right here so basically if you're thinking about doing batteries inside a vehicle uh, a lot of people just do it and don't really worry too about it, much about it but the potential for hydrogen is explosions and um, uh, just asphyxiation from breathing in hydrogen gas uh, which like I said uh, almost always only happens when the batteries are charging and since I had this set up so we will always be charging during the day and then I thought it would be a good idea to spend a few extra dollars and copper is uh, expensive and, and do it the right way which I did uh, basically so the solar power comes into the the uh, solar charge controller and uh, provides two outputs and this is called a duo there's little switches here where you program what type of battery you have in each bank either uh, position one would be sealed battery which would be my battery bank one position two would be a uh, flooded battery which is my battery bank two uh, so I basically tell the controller what type of battery it is because they charge differently and to different uh, peaks and also there's a dipshit dip, did I say dipshit dip switch that actually uh, says how do you want to charge or you're charging priority for the two banks uh, there's two positions position one is 90 10 90 percent of the power going to battery bank one and 10 percent to two or as I selected uh, switch position two which is 50 50 so basically the Sun Saver will split power between the two battery banks equally right now the little Sun tells me that it's a this is a solar uh, input is 1.04 amps right now and if I go to this switch, battery bank number one is at 13.11 volts. Battery bank two is at 13.05 volts. And some temperature readings as well. Also what it tells you, this is again battery bank one, 13.11 to 12 volts. If I do this, it tells me since it's been hooked up, I have collected 73.7 .7 amp hours of power to that battery bank which I've used some of the batteries for some of my power tools and whatnot which is pretty darn cool battery bank 2 I just hooked up a couple hours ago 13.04 um, volts and I've actually only picked up 3.8 amp hours uh, in the brief time it's been hooked up now those numbers aren't hard and fast um, when I actually put a load on the system the voltage is actually a little bit more realistic um, when there's no load on the batteries it seems to uh, it tends to want to show it at a higher voltage rate. When I put a load on it, it actually goes down to a more reasonable 12.6, uh, 12.7 volts, which is more realistic. So I just wanted to show you guys that, that setup. My van is a mess because for the last two days I've been just tearing things apart and, and you know setting my system up.